Hello, welcome all. Good morning to all of you. My name is Vishal Manocha, your host today. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. Our office is based in Brampton, Ontario, and another location in Alberta, Calgary. And we have two offices back home in India, both of them in Haryana, in Karnal, and Kshetra. Welcome back to our live session. We have this session every Friday, same time in the summer's time and in winter's time. We do change the time according to the time zone we are in. But yes, every in the summertime during Canada, we have the session 11 a.m. every Friday. So the idea about having a session is to again give you all the updates, the important updates from Canadian immigration, and also to share. Give, just give our clients time, uh, clients time to ask their questions, put them into the comment section, and I'll answer them for you live right now. So this session is usually for 30 minutes and 30 to 40 minutes, and definitely we try to give you all the important updates. From the last one week so starting up this week was a PNP invitation week and expression entry week so there, there was an expression entry draw and as I told you last week and as expected the CRS code dropped down to what my idea was of 525 yes the CRS code this time was 525 and number of invitations went high by again another 250 as compared to the previous draw, the number of invitations sent this time was two, uh, sorry, 2,250 invitations were sent under this express entry draw. So as I was discussing last time, there was no draw last uh, week, but every fortnight, every Wednesday, this is the fourth draw held since July 2016, uh, 2021 when the draw resumed back again after a gap of more than one and a half years. Uh, they started from 557 was the first draw and now it has dropped down to 525 so 32 points drop in the last four previous draws and yes as compared to the last one there is an eight point draw in the previous one because the previous one was 533 so eight point drops on in the crs the score is dropping all you can you can see here is exactly yes the score is dropping starting from 557 coming back to 522.5 and pretty soon we will be below less than 500 we will be getting there very very soon so don't get disappointed if you are scoring somewhere around 480 490 the IRCC will be getting to that point right now because the number of people in the pool uh, in that range about 500 is uh, what they need right now to fill up the quota for this year so maybe it takes another couple of months before we get to that point, maybe end of this year or beginning of next year, but the draw will be dropping and it will be coming close to 500 or less than 500 as it was during pre-pandemic. So till now, almost around 7,500 invitations have been sent in the last one and a half months. Before 6th of July 2022, the last draw held in this category was December 2020. So after one and a half year, it started again. All these draws which are happening since July 2022 uh, are all category draw which include express entry through FSW, through CEC and through PNP program. So all three categories are included and that's how they are getting the draws right now. So there are no specific PNP draws coming as which were coming before July 6th. So since July 6th, all the draws which are happening are all program draws. And every in, uh, the invitation has been sent to expressionary people, federal school class, and PNP. So all three categories are apply uh, are uh, invited in this draw. So now the people who are get calling us are definitely there's a lot of concern because people usually in Canada uh, who are qualified in the Canadian Express class usually don't score that high score. But you need to remember that TR to PR pathway is coming up very soon. As per the announcement and as per the 120 days, we are hardly three weeks away from the minister making an announcement. If still everything goes as planned and as initially informed, after motion 44, which was introduced in April 2022, the minister, immigration minister was supposed to come up with a policy for TR to PR, which is supposed to start, maybe start somewhere in 2023, but we are hoping by September second week, we will have an update on TR to PR and how exactly international student and foreign worker will be getting benefit we will soon find out about that too so not too many days are left hardly three weeks from now and as i said if everything is planned as per previous announcement by IRCC, we should be looking forward 
to getting those draw, uh, getting to that point where tier to peer policy is announced. And I'm pretty sure that is going to be very, very helpful for people who are in Canada and qualify under CEC and also for people who are as a temporary foreign worker and who have got Canadian experience, they will be getting benefit out of this tr 2 pr policy. So stay tuned for that. As soon as it is updated, we will definitely discuss that uh, every detail about that in our program in the live show. And also we do update all the regular update from IRCC or from any province on our Facebook. And in fact, all social media, media handles Either it's Instagram, it's TikTok, it's YouTube, and Facebook, everywhere it's been updated as soon as we get any new update. We do have this session every Friday. Just to give you a recap of what happened in the one week, but we do put all the regular updates on our social media channels. So you can like them, subscribe them, and definitely you'll getting all the updates you're looking forward to so that you, if you're planning to come to Canada for your studies or getting settled down, applying for a work permit, then you can definitely benefit out of the latest information available and we will be like we will be definitely there to help you and assist you in the best best possible manner we can other than that there were three provincial nominee program also held in the last one week we will be discussing about them because there's a lot of excitement we can see for one of the province we will be discussing today which has in fact uh, previously they used to have, have a draw after every uh, two months now they're having a draw every week and they're inviting good number of people. So we will be discussing about the province. But before that, we will start up with British Columbia. Uh, they have their draw on August 10. What the draw was, no, but the information is released after that. So 155 invitations were sent under that provincial nominee draw um, from British Columbia. The people who were invited were to Express Entry also, healthcare workers were invited. Tech occupations were invited. Tech has been one of the, uh, I think, uh, skill shortage the BC has of the tech people we have seen. Tech draws coming very, very regularly. Uh, initially, in fact, there were some specific draws also coming, uh, which came for tech. But right now, this draw was a mixed draw, where express entry people, healthcare people, people from education, who are early childhood educators, they were invited. Entry level, semi-skilled people were invited. And as I said, tech, people were also invited in this draw. The number was less, only 155, but still, yes, the draws are happening very frequently. When we are, uh, when you're thinking about migrating, uh, immigrating to Canada, basically you're looking for a couple of options. Either one is express entry, you look forward to, the other one is provincial nominee program. These are very good programs. You should definitely keep an eye on these programs. The programs are inviting a lot of international, like a lot of people overseas, and people are getting benefit are landing in Canada as a permanent resident. But you need to be aware of those program. You need to be uh, one aware of those program, and also you should have updated information. And that's what the whole idea of us conducting this show is to give those ideas to you. If you still have any doubts, any confusion about those program, contact us later after this show through our email or a contact uh, details or any through or any of our social media platform. We will reply back to you as soon as possible. Meanwhile, as we are discussing this um, various draws which were held in last week, I request if anybody, who's, all the viewers who want to have, who have any question in their mind, anything they can think of, any complicated situation they are in, contact us or you can post it right now into the comment section and I'll be happy to answer all the uh, uh, questions to, uh, to our viewers and clients right now, which is definitely going to help all the clients and viewers clear their doubts too. So if you have any question, kindly go ahead and put it into the comment section. Second, the, the province I was discussing about, the most exciting I could see happening is from Saskatchewan. They are inviting people uh, very regularly now. Previously, the draws were held in, the, in two months. Now, every week, a draw has been held from Saskatchewan province, which is very, very great. The number of invitation sends are getting higher. And the way they get their draw, the people invited is through express entry and their occupation in demand list. So you have to be, you can check that list, even this was published this time, which all category people were invited. So not only just people with express entry, if you have created your profile with Saskatchewan uh, province on their own portal, that is basically creating a profile is showing an expression of interest that you are willing to move to Saskatchewan province 
and getting settled down there you have to create your profile uh, once you create your profile there then uh, depending on the score you have depending on the occupation you have got your experience they do as i said so whenever they have their draws the people who are invited are either secretary or their skill in occupation in demand list discussing about the draw which was held on august 11 there was 745 invitations sent in that draw which is a good number now people who were invited 433 invitations sent were sent to the people who got their express entry uh, to express entry and 312 invitation was sent to people on occupation from occupation in demand list so three, you could be one of them you could be lucky enough all you need to do is if you are definitely not aware of how the things were you can contact us we can see if your occupation is in demand in Saskatchewan or what are your chances of getting been picked by express entry uh, through Saskatchewan PNP program and we can figure it out for you that you may get an invite as i said 745 people just got invited last week with with both the categories express entry and occupation in demand so this is a very good time if you're full planning to migrate to Canada after pandemic most of the things are uh, have opened up the pnps are starting inviting people the application processing has improved a bit not to what we are looking forward to or what it should be but the profile has improved a little bit as compared to what was happening during pandemic uh, so you should definitely go ahead and contact us if you are looking forward to uh, if you are looking forward for your provincial nominee pr or express entry pr contact us and we can help you in that regard Now also I have seen a lot of videos circulating around in in Canada and in India both to a lot of the agents saying that Canada visa has stopped there are no visas coming uh, you should not apply to Canada uh, Canada is no longer the place to be you will be wasting your time you will be wasting your money there that is not the case yes the processing is slow yes the backlog is there but we are getting decisions every day every day study permit thousands of study permit are been approved every day we are getting thousand open work permit application approved every day we are getting pr approved for one or the other client for pr pnp or express entry so the things are working not yes definitely not exactly uh, the way it should have been but as the agents are pretending there or they are trying to uh, convince the client to go to other country by putting videos advertising that canada has completely stopped there is no where you can go to canada now they are not processing anything they are just everything is going in backlog that is not the situation if you go to our facebook page you will find every day one or the other or go to our tiktok channel you will find client reviews uh, client was given us uh, the reviews we have shared the information on the social media of the visa approval we get every day so every day the visa are coming it's not like that everything is stopped it slows it has slowed down definitely but it's improving and it's improving very very quickly just to give you an example spousal open work permit applications are now been getting processed in less than 2 months which was went high to as much as 1 year during pandemic so you can see a lot of improvement been done the usual processing time even before pandemic was around 45 to 60 days so now spousal open work permit has come down to a normal processing time of within 2 months Secondly, if you think of, uh, if we talk about uh, work permits from India, we have got a job offer and applying for a work permit. It says one year, but we have, in fact, our client have got their work permit approved after LMI within four to five months. So the, the processing is slow, is delayed, but it's not completely stopped. That is the wrong information being spread. That there's no visa granted. Canada is closed. Canada is done. So you will not get any more visa. That is not the situation. The visas are coming. They are slow, but it's improving, and definitely by the end of this year, as per the commitment by ICC, definitely they will be clearly working on their backlog and reducing them as much as possible. And hopefully by 2023, we are back to our normal processing time. So now I'll be taking up a couple of questions we have, uh, and then we will be again still continuing with the further update about all the other province. There's another still one more draw to be discussed. Another province which held their draw. recently we will be discussing about that too so first we have arun jain hello arun uh, yuvraj if you have any question kindly post it into the comment section here and i'll reply back for you then we have got 
uh, Fonji Tata from said, I need work permit. I'm in Dubai. Okay, yes, there are a lot of people from Dubai who come to Canada on a work permit. Dubai is one of the places where uh, you find a lot of people, especially coming for different category of work permit they come for. Most of them are coming here for trucking. It's one of the very strong field where people, because they have got good experience back in with Dubai, so they are very good candidate if they are looking to apply for a work permit. But and other than that, like any category of uh, occupation you're looking forward, you get your work permit for. You need to have an LMI, a labor market impact assessment. A positive decision needs to be made. Once the positive decision has been made, then only you can apply for your work permit. So there is a process to be followed. And once you process uh, to start up that process, definitely you need to have an employer who is ready to hire you, who is ready to hire you. Your your occupation is in is what he is looking forward to. If you have got experience in that field, you have been hired, then he will apply for an LMI application for you. Once that LMI application is approved, they will be applying for a, for a work permit application thereafter. So that's how the whole process works. So yes, people from across the globe, especially Dubai is one of the uh, country which has got good resources and a lot of people come from Dubai and work in Canada. Then we have Gurpreet Kaur. Hello, I want to know what is the procedural fairness letter. Okay. Now this is a very good question, Gurpreet. I think we were discussing about this um, in our last show too, but I'll just let all of our clients know how exactly this works. So what happens is when you submit your application to IRCC, any application, so visitor visa, study permit, PR, or any application, right? You have to truthfully answer all your questions. You cannot hide the information, you cannot misrepresent your application. Your document you are submitting should be genuine. There should be no fake document. All the documents submitted should be uh, true and best to your knowledge. It should be a true document. And once you submit the application, say example, even by this date, you have not mentioned something in your application. Say giving you an example, your application was previously refused for one of the country and you forgot to mention that in your application form. If you have done so and the officer finds out that yes, the application was made, for example, to US and it was refused, but that was not declared on your visitor visa application, then the officer will issue you a fairness procedure letter where they give you 30 days time to explain how that happened, why that happened, and why this information was not shared initially. So this is one of the example I'm sharing about. So in this circumstances, uh, mostly which is misrepresentation of your, uh, if you have hidden some information has been hidden when you submitted your application in that circumstances, yes, the fairness procedure letter is issued where you get 30 days to reply back to that letter. The concern the officer has raised and if you are able to justify those concerns, then definitely you, your work permit or whatever application submitted will be processed further and granted. But if you're not able to justify the answers, then basically you may be banned to apply for any visa for, to Canada for the next five years. So yes, it is very, you have to be very, very careful when we do, you do your application or your representative is doing. Mostly what we have seen is the client don't give the complete information which is very, very important uh, because a consultant or agent who is working with you only knows what you're telling. If you're hiding something in your information, in your file, in your information, or giving any fraudulent document, he don't know about it. So if that goes through and the IFCC officer finds out that something is fishy, if, uh, fishy here, or something doesn't seem to be fine or some information seems to be uh, misrepresented, they can definitely send you a fairness, fairness procedure letter which gives you 30 days to reply and you have to be very strong in your reply and you have to definitely make sure in the first instance when you submit your application you are not misrepresenting or hiding any information. So think about it when you apply. Sometimes people say oh I, got, I forgot that I have had a refusal or I, we are applying for the parents and they say we forgot we have a refusal or the parents got refused. You cannot forget this thing. These are important. They have asked you a question. The purpose of ask, asking that question, they're expecting you to answer that and not answer that truthfully. So that definitely means that you have to answer that truthfully, then only you will get your visa approved. I hope could be that answer your question. Then we have Hamel asking us, sir, I am from India. My document was submitted on 9 June and biometric for 14 June for two visa, but still no further processes. When should I expect any update? Hamel, to be very honest, right now, uh, because of the number of backlog uh, Canadian immigration has, 
this their visa is not on their priority list. They are trying to get people who have got an LMI, uh, coming here for a work permit, who their spouse is here, and they want to invite their spouse on an open work permit, or their spouse is here on a PR of citizen, they want to invite their spouses on a work permit, then only you can uh, basically, uh, these, these are the act of, uh, application which are getting approval quickly, Visitor visas are taking time, they are processing it, but very, very slowly. So you may have to wait longer than expected. The application time is not clearly defined right now. Some applications do even get quickly processed, but most of them are not. So you have to wait, you have to be patient. That's the only answer I have for you. But uh, these applications are not on their priority list and it may take longer than expected. So if you are planning to visit Canada, my advice for you be definitely you should submit your application, but you need to plan it out at least uh, a week or two, sorry, uh, at least four to six months in advance before you are deciding to visit Canada. You should submit your application because an average processing time of a visitor visa application is up to three to four months even. So for you to come here on time, you should have plenty of time and the time is around, as I said, if you have a time of around, um, more time you have, the more chances your your is that your visa will be approved before your plan get so just plan accordingly if you're applying for a visa visa give yourself four to six months in advance before you're planning to visit canada then we will ask a question for sanjay sir for memorial university in newfoundland for my son non-medical eligibility date and i i think uh the ilt is, is excellent sanjay and then your percentage of your son also seems to be excellent 88% is a good person. If you are targeting that university, I'm pretty sure there are very high chances your son uh, will be admitted to one of the uh, program or the university or if you need our help, we can also help you too. But you have to make sure, you have to make sure that uh, when you are applying for the study permit or the university you are selecting, you have to be, you need to uh, be aware of that you are applying well in advance. For example, if your son wants to do a bachelor degree from there, uh, new founder university if the intake is january it's already too late to be honest so by the time you'll get your <coughs> admission offer letter submit your visa for the visa application the chances are your son will not be able to enter canada before january so that's uh, what i was even advising to our visa visa client in fact all our clients all our viewers who are planning to submit their application for canada even if for study work permit visitor you need to plan well in advance, <clears throat> especially for a uh, for study permit. It is taking around four to five months, right? In fact, sorry, <coughs> twelve to sixteen weeks. <clears throat> uh, right now, it's take uh, before a study permit application is approved. So that means if you are applying for January, right now your file should be in the high commission. <clears throat> sorry for that. I hope that answers your question, Sanjay. <coughs> Then Ankit has a question. Hello, sir. My file is submitted on 25th July for September intake. How much time will I get a visa? Can I defer next to stay? <coughs> Ankit, uh, as I was just telling you, definitely, uh, <coughs> sorry for that, Ankit. Definitely got this stuff. <coughs> <coughs> So yes, <clears throat> if you have applied for a study permit in July <clears throat> and waiting for a September visa, the chances are less. <clears throat> I advise you to contact your college uh, for the defer because <clears throat> it's going to be very, very less chances that uh, you will be able to get in, <clears throat> will be able to get visa on time for September intake. You should target for January 2023. I think you can wait for another week or time then you can ask your college <coughs> or your agent to kindly defer it to the next intake and then you can apply for and then definitely you'll have a better chances. <coughs> Update that uh, uh, letter to the IRCC once you receive from the institution so that they know that you have deferred your intake and you are proceed to start up your education in January now. So then definitely you'll be, you have a better chance. If you want maximizing and advice, you just wait for another week, then you can definitely start your deferment process. I hope that answers your question, Ankit. Thank you, Sanjay uh, Anija, for asking your question. Thanks a lot. 
So we were we have been discussing about the updates today, but the PNP, the IRCC, uh, sorry, the Express Entry Draws and PNP. The last one I want to discuss before we wrap up the session will be Manitoba. Manitoba held their PNP draw on 11th of August. 345 people were invited. Now the people who were invited were skilled workers who were already working in Manitoba. 257 people were invited out of 345. 33 people were invited who were overseas. They were invited who were overseas or not in Canada. Uh, they are working overseas. They were invited. And then 55 students were invited, international students were invited through the International Graduate Street Manitoba program. So under these three provinces, the uh, draws were held and the people were invited under the three provinces. So British Columbia had a draw, Saskatchewan had a draw and Manitoba had the PNP draw. So there were three PNP draw held in the last one week. So now this, this is all about express entry and the PNP draw. Now let us some, discuss something about onshore students who are in Canada and looking for college admission. <clears throat> Seats are available for September 2022 intake and for January 2023 intake. Onshore seats are available if you have got, <clears throat> if you are just moving, coming to Canada on a private college or you have completed your one year program and looking for second year program, we have an option for you in fall and 2000, even January 2023 intake. You need to plan your next year program, especially you have completed the one year program well in advance. If you want to start up your program in January now, you should be already applying for the institution. But right now, because of too high demand of Canadian institution, the seats are filled up very, very fast. So yeah, my advice to you will be if you are looking, even if you are onshore and looking for January 2023 intake, contact us immediately. We have seats available all across Canada. Other than that, you can also contact us if you are if you have uh, looking for fall 2020 20, sorry, 22 intake the seats are available you need to contact us immediately at our brampton location the brampton location is based uh, is very close to ontario and steels near brampton gateway terminal it's very accessible for you to come and visit us. even if you can't visit you can give us a call and we can help processing all categories of application online there are a lot of clients who we represent a few of them in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, PNP, and other province. They are that we can we assist us still assisting them because of the online options we have right now. Most of the information and document can be done online. So if you are in any province, you can contact us and we will be happy to assist you in that regard. So that's it about the PNPs, and that's it about the this live show we, we are we are supposed to hold today. Uh, <clears throat> we are coming to the end of the show. And I think we have discussed all the updates we had from the last one week. If you still have any question, we will be while we are wrapping the session. You can still post it into the comment section and I'll try to answer them for you before I leave. But we will again have this show next Friday, 11 a.m. At the same time, we will be having this show. And it happens every Friday, same time. It's like 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and India is 8.30 p.m. Soon after a couple of, hardly a month after from now, two months from now, we will be changing the time, but we will let you know. But this is a no usual time. It's Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our show. So thank you all the viewers and clients for joining this session. Thank you for asking your questions. If you are still have any doubt, any question, contact us. Our office is also based in Alberta. We are also based in India, in Karnal and Kukshetra. You can contact us for college admissions, for onshore and offshore both, for work permit, for PR, for express entry, for citizenship application any category of application related to immigration we can definitely help you in that regard so thank you all for joining in we will see you live uh, next friday 11 a.m till then have a good weekend great weekend and we will see you all live 